Now we come to the homogeneous equilibria. Okay, when the reactants and the products are in the same phase, okay, it will be called a homogeneous reaction. <coughs> when reactants and products are in the same phase. That is solid, liquid, or gas, then the equilibrium is called a homogeneous equilibrium. Now the equation that we have been dealing with often, this is a homogeneous equilibrium, right? Okay. <clears throat> Fine. No, but but the way we tackle the things that becomes a bit different that that you'll soon see so so that is why it comes into play <clears throat> Okay But normally yes, you normally state the states right you you mention the states so the same with the famous famous ammonia reaction <clears throat> Right all in the gaseous phase okay and then and then you must have no you you have not maybe gone through this this is the hydration of this gives you this plus an H from the an H from the water comes here and the OH gets attached to this so so it is ethanol the right they, they are all in <coughs> yeah aqueous liquid aqueous Okay, <clears throat> so these are homogeneous systems. So, so a reaction in which all the reactants and products are are in the same phase that is known as a homogeneous system. And the equilibrium does attain there is homogeneous equilibrium, right? So, so when when reactants and products are in the same phase. phase it is called a homogeneous system okay <clears throat> now let us let us come to a homogeneous system in which all the reactants and the products are gases and that happens too often okay in so many important reactions you'll find the reactants and products to be in the same phase especially the gas phase, right? <clears throat> so, so we come to the equilibrium constant in the gaseous phase. So equilibrium constant in the gaseous phase, okay? <clears throat> now try to understand in a gas you have to otherwise you have to otherwise in this find out the concentration of the gas now how do you know the concentration of the gas 
how do you know the concentration of the gas you should be able to measure it right somehow somehow you should be able to measure the concentration and what what means do you have say in an aqueous solution okay you have you can titrate things you can react it with something you know the solvent you know the num amount of solute that you have put in so you can find out the concentration okay it's easy for you to do that in a gas what do you do in a gas gas how do you how do you understand what is the what is the what is the number of moles say per liter okay so there the the only easily measurable property that you have with the gas is its pressure, pressure. okay it's quite easily measurable and you have to somehow convert that into into the the concentration <coughs> correct <coughs> into the concentration and as i told you the most po potent weapon in your hand when dealing with gases is the gas equation okay the more you rely and explore this the more you'll be amazed at its power to solve questions for you okay it's really amazing now now try to think so so i have p is equal to n upon v into rt correct now the normal the normal units that you'll be using will be what will be will be v is in in meter cube okay t is in kelvin right and and maybe r whatever you put accordingly p and things will change right so so we have, we had seen that it if it was it, if it was atmosphere liter no if, if this was atmosphere and this was meter cube then it became atmosphere meter cube okay per mole per kelvin and r had a different value okay so so p normally in atmosphere or or say in pascal if you put it in pascal then what happens then what happens it, it, it used to become joule right joule per mole per kelvin do you remember that because it's newton per meter squared divided by newton per meter squared multiplied by v that is meter cube so it became newton into meters so it depends now just try to think if if i put this in mole per liter okay and call it c the concentration the concentration of this into r into t and try to put try to put try to put p in bar okay p in bar so 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 this is the normal unit now what i do here here in this equation my c is concentration right in mole per liter okay per liter t is kelvin this is mole per liter let's try to understand mole per liter this is i i don't know it yet this is kelvin and this is this is in bar p is in bar try to understand this r if i put in terms of bar liter per mole per kelvin then immediately this becomes your concentration do we get the point do we get the point so r is in r is in bar liter per mole 
O Kelvin. Correct? Okay. Okay. So what happens? My concentration becomes so. Okay, so so is this now? Now we we can very clearly see that our concentration, concentration C is concentration, concentration C is directly proportional to P, is it not? Okay. Okay. In fact, it is the concentration is P into RT to the power minus 1. Is it not? Okay. Now you pick up an equation and in place of concentration, you just start substituting this. Fine. You substitute this and see what happens. See what happens to that okay <clears throat> so 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 let us let us pick up this famous equation that we have been dealing with in the equation in the equation h2 in the gas state plus i2 in the gas state giving you 2hi in the gas state only for the uh, gaseous this is gas equation you are using no? and they all have to be in the same state yeah otherwise it's not possible right now now what happens is what happens is what is rkc what is rkc yes that is concentration of hi square upon that 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 we know h2 and concentration of i2 now what is that equal to so this becomes phi into rt to the power minus 1 squared is it not upon p h2 into r t to the power minus 1 into p i2 into r t to the power minus 1 what does that give you into RT to the power minus 2 divided by PH2 into PI2 into RT to the power minus 2 is not. Now that is equal to PHI square upon PH2 into PI2. Okay.
this is equal to that okay now for the gaseous systems we define a new equilibrium constant if you are dealing with pressures okay so we call that a, a new equilibrium constant equilibrium constant kp is defined how where kp is equal to you deal with pressures okay you simply deal with pressures so phi whole square upon ph2 into p i2 does it not Then, then they'll then they'll start yeah. following the same thing the same way in which in which you have then it'll stay there and that is the point where kp and kc will be different okay then they'll be different okay so so kc is this and we have defined this as kp so in this equation thus in this equation this is equal to in this equation kp is equal to kc this may not always be true kp may may not always equal kc kp may not always equal kc somehow in this reaction it has so happened because what has happened if you, if you look at the constants then then this and the sum of these they are the same no they are the same if it was different they'll differ by a factor of rt to the power something okay fine that we'll soon see in the next next reaction so so the next reaction we pick up is this okay let us write the the kc and kp instead of writing this understanding this as this you can start with kp and and go to kc You can use either, right? P is equal to C into RT or C is equal to P into RT to the power minus 1. Does not make any difference at all. Fine? So, so what do we do? Start writing. 